This here is another viewer's broken gaming PC, and uh, let me tell you, this has been through a lot. We're talking motherboard swaps, graphics card swaps, yeah, this has uh, really been through the ringer, and so far the system is still being very stubborn. Originally, the owner told me that the system refused to post, he was getting no error code of any kind, he took it to a local repair shop, they couldn't fix it, so he just started part swapping on his own, swapping the motherboard and the graphics card out seemed to fix the issue, but he hadn't narrowed down what was causing that problem to begin with. Uh, and now at this point, the reason why it's here in this office uh, is because his system is suddenly refusing to power on again, or if it does power on, uh, it refuses to post and shows a CPU debug light. What are the chances that swapping the graphics card and the motherboard only temporarily fixed the problem? The real issue the entire time has been the CPU. We've run into our fair share of um, busted up Ryzen CPUs, especially third gen Ryzen CPUs. We're gonna see if that is in fact the issue here. Hopefully we can get this thing back up and running again very soon. Are you ready? Stay with me. If you're in the market for a gaming PC packing one heck of a punch, consider HP's Omen 45L lineup. They sport the latest and greatest from AMD and Intel, including the Ryzen 7 5800X and up to Core i9 12900K, along with graphics cards ranging from the RTX 3060 up to RTX 3090. You'll find 16 gigs of system memory, plenty of storage, and a unique patented Omen cryo chamber for optimal cooling, coupled with a 240 mil AIO liquid cooler baked in. Take advantage of Nvidia's DLSS for excellent frame rates and detail in many modern titles. Customize the look and feel thanks to native RGB functionality and settle for peace of mind with HP's warranty. These are meant to be plug and play experiences with zero hassle. Learn more about HP Omen gaming desktops, including how to save up to 10% with promo codes via the links in this video's description. Hey there, and welcome to Fix or Flop. In this playlist, we fix viewers broken PCs, or at least attempt to, for free. This is why we call it fix or flop because sometimes we do flop and it seems that just like some people just don't get that. Like, oh, you said you were gonna fix the PC. What a letdown. That's a waste of time. Why did, why did you do them dirty like that? Well, look, we're upfront about it. I mean, we don't charge anything for this. Zero dollars and zero cents, no money exchanges hands. All we ask that you do is drive out to meet us to drop the system off and pick it back up again. That's it. Anyway, that all aside, again, this video, this person has, has totally swapped out so many things that ultimately didn't fix what I believe to be the underlying problem, which is the CPU. It sounds like it is because the debug LED for the CPU lights up when the system is powered on. Again, no picture out. That's what we need to replicate first. We've got power connected and I'm just gonna push the button up front. All right, and right away, CPU debug light is lit almost instantly. I wonder how much time passed between the motherboard replacement, supposedly, and the CPU debug light. I, from what it sounded like, there was maybe a month or two month period when the system worked fine again, but it's possible that swapping the motherboard out immediately tripped the CPU error because of a BIOS incompatibility. That's a possibility. Um, Maybe the CPU wasn't installed correctly into the socket. Maybe a pin or two was maybe broke on the CPU when it was being reinstalled on the new motherboard. Who really knows? Uh, the fact of the matter is, I say all that to say, you shouldn't trust the word of any owner when they bring anything to you in a professional setting. It's not that you're trying to personally insult them, right? And nothing's personal, or at least it shouldn't be in this business. You just, you make a habit of needing to verify things yourself because sometimes what owners say or what, how they describe things just doesn't really compute with what we actually see physically in the office, right? So uh, you have to cover all your bases. What I think I'm gonna do first is double check wiring. We'll double check uh, RAM seating, things that aren't necessarily related to the CPU debug light, but that could very easily cause issues. The CPU is one of the first things that gets checked in a post process. And so if it, if it detects an obvious issue right out of the gate, that debug light could just be illuminated by default because it's the first thing to be checked. Uh, we've seen that with other things as well. The GPU usually is the last thing to be checked. And sometimes that stays lit even though there is no GPU issue. So let's power back off and do some digging. 
Now I noticed right away there's some issue with the way this motherboard's seated in the case because at the back here the flash BIOS button is clearly not aligned and I've pushed from the left side and I can't get this to sit properly. So there might be something wedged between the board and the motherboard tray that could be causing a short. We're gonna take the right panel off just to be sure. I didn't see anything fall through on the case side. The motherboard looks to be just a tad bit bent. You might not be able to see it on camera, uh, but just slightly bent up there at the top. It's not super worrying or anything, but I think that's why it wasn't aligning. So uh, hopefully not a fitment issue. What we can do next is swap out the CPU or at least take a look at the CPU because, well, we're being told that it's a CPU problem, at least according to the motherboard. This is a, one sec here, we'll clean up the thermal paste. It's a Ryzen 5 3600. I'm not really surprised if this is to blame. We've run into several defective 3600s, 3600Xs, for whatever reason, again, can't pinpoint it. Just could be because these are such popular CPUs, we see more of them die, but uh, yeah. Now we'll take it out and check the pins as well as the socket. The pins look okay, nothing too alarming here, just a bit of thermal paste to clean up. Otherwise, uh, nothing missing, nothing bent. And the socket looks nice and fine as well. There's plenty of tension here in this bracket. I don't see any physical issues with the socket itself. Uh, nothing clogged in any of the holes. So, I mean, physical inspection checks out. At this point, I'm inclined to swap the CPU out only because we already have the platform fully removed from the case. It'd be pretty easy to do that at this point. Uh, and we also have those clues, the context clues pointing to the CPU, not only the, the word of the owner, uh, but also the, uh, the debug LED for the chip. Um, I, because I don't see any other physical problems with the motherboard, we've reseated RAM, we've cleared the CMOS, obvious things, made sure that those work fine. Uh, I, I'm tempted to just swap CPUs. I mean, this is a this is a B450 Max Tomahawk board, and this includes, I think, by default, out of the box, Zen 2 support, so Ryzen 3000, which this is a Ryzen 5 3600. So these should work natively. There shouldn't be a BIOS holding this back or keeping it from posting. So let's see if swapping the CPU is all it takes. I am waiting for a few chips to show up direct from AMD. And in the meantime, I can go ahead and swap in this 2600. If this ends up fixing the issue, he can keep this. I know it's a bit of a downgrade one generation back, but at least his uh, rig will be up and running again. I'm, I'm not sure he's willing to spend at this point, I don't know, $100, $120 for a 3600. If he is, then uh, I'll take this back out and give him his rig and at least he'll know what to replace. I've got the Bear Essentials wired up now, 24 pin, 8 pin, and supplemental PCIe uh, with his graphics card in here. Of course, the swapped out CPU. Oh, CPU debug light is now off. We should be getting a post here soon. Might be training memory, a few other things. Power cycling, it's not abnormal. Yep, VGA lights now illuminated and there we go. Was it really that simple? Wow, having debug LEDs on motherboards should just be a standard. Always, <laughs> that would be nice. It doesn't cost much more to include a few LEDs, right? For troubleshooting purposes. Uh, it just makes the process so much easier for us. So at this point, I'm inclined to run a few more tests on his 3600. The one thing we can definitely check for is a dead memory channel. And even if that ends up being the case, I'll still swap this out. I'll let him know what the limitation will be and then I'll let him decide if he wants the 2600 or if he wants to keep his and maybe swap it out, return it. I'm assuming it's an older chip because he hasn't replaced this as far as I'm aware. But uh, I want to put together a makeshift test rig and yeah, see if there's anything else we can learn about this thing. So here's what we've got going. I've got an X570S Aorus Master from Gigabyte. This has a Dr. Debug LED on it, uh, closer to the top here. So we're gonna use that to see what codes we have. All right, so we're gonna push the power button and we'll see what happens. Okay, looks good. Code 15. This is uh, definitely not a CPU issue here. Uh, this is a normal boot cycle. Whoa, what? Okay. Uh, weird. That's a post, which means his CPU actually isn't dead. Um, I, I think what I'm, eesh, what I'm gonna do now 
is go back to his system and I'm gonna look at the BIOS because I noticed something, I noticed something and it just, it, it just, it kind of piqued my interest because while the BIOS revision on his board currently is actually not listed on MSI's website. So you can see here, his BIOS revision is 7C02V3E0. Well, if we swing on over to their product page, the uh, BIOS listed here, let's see, we've got one that came out in the 2021, it's a version 3B, okay, it's not that one, version 3C, not that one, we're getting warmer though, version 3D, still not that one. And then all of a sudden we get this other one, version 3F2, but there's no version 3E. And uh, yeah, the, the dates actually line up as well, because this one came out in 2022, uh, April 20th, and ours that was installed, that came out around May 15th, I believe. And then we just have this one here, which was, what, July 15th. But where's the May revision? It's it's literally missing. And we are on the correct uh, page for the for this uh for this board. So I'm, <laughs> I, I'm curious. I think that BIOS was probably broken and they just, uh, yeah, retracted it. Maybe just told us to revert back to 3C or 3D. And uh, now they have a beta version. So I think what I'm going to do is install version 3D. So I'm actually going to revert back from the one he has currently on his board and see if this fixes our CPU compatibility issue. Back to his rig, I've got the BIOS downloader that I want. This is the non-beta latest release. It is stable.3d0. I'm gonna click yes and let this ride out. I hope that this fixes it. If not, I might just replace the motherboard instead of his CPU. That way he can use uh, a more modern chip and not have to deal with a downgrade of any sort. And now it's time to throw in his original 3600. And then we've got the older BIOS in here. I'm hoping that this works. Again, it's worth a shot at this point. I noticed that the, uh, that the E version was missing. So maybe that's the reason. This is for all the marbles. Here we go. I'm, uh, gonna power it on. I think it's working because the CPU debug light went off right away. Oh, exciting. Any second now. There it is. There it is. What on earth was that? What I think happened is he swapped the motherboard for this one here. And this motherboard shipped from the factory at a certain point in time, maybe around May, because that's when this BIOS was released, with that version, .3e0. Now, I don't find any information online about that BIOS even existing. I'm not sure how long it was in production, but I do know that it's no longer on their site, and I think this is why. So reverting literally one BIOS revision backwards was all it took to get this 3600 up and running again. It's likely that version completely removed Zen 2 support. For whatever reason, they always have constraints, uh, size constraints for uh, CPU compatibilities in these BIOSes. They're just not very large chips, but it wouldn't make sense for them to remove Zen 2 support when Zen Plus CPUs work just fine on that BIOS. Ooh, check it out. You actually can still buy these B450 boards brand new from Amazon, shipped and sold from their warehouses. So these are still, are they still in production? That is pretty nuts. That would explain why this would have shipped with that BIOS out of the box um, and, and you could have been screwed from the from the start. So yeah, this is, this is weird. I'm gonna try reaching out to MSI and seeing if they have any other info on that particular BIOS revision. I expect that's why it doesn't exist any longer on their site. Last thing to do then, now that all of his original peripherals, all cables are reconnected, is double check that this boots back into Windows because again, it was working at one point. There should be a bootable volume on one of these drives. They're both SATA drives. So we get our post, that's good. And that's a good sign. Looks like it's loading into Windows. Just a few more seconds here. I think he's got an SSD in here, so it should load pretty quick. And there we are. That's it. That's, uh, that's all it took. Uh, wonky BIOS that is no longer listed. It might have been a beta BIOS, now that I'm thinking about it. It might have been something that was being tested. This is why I don't usually recommend that you upgrade to uh, a beta revision, just in case there is something in there that completely nukes support for whatever CPU generation you're running. 
Uh, that very well could have been the case here. It didn't say that it was a beta BIOS in the in the in this BIOS in the UEFI. Um, I, I might have said it somewhere else. I, I didn't notice, but uh, yeah, I, it's it's pretty evident at this point that that BIOS was keeping the system from working for whatever reason. It just decided just randomly to stop. And look, you could have been led to believe it was the motherboard's fault because swapping the board out would have fixed it, right? Total different BIOS, different manufacturer. Great, the motherboard's dead, right? But it clearly wasn't. Uh, could have swapped out the CPU as well. Uh, probably not from Zen 2 to Zen 2. Wouldn't have made sense to swap a 3600 with a 3600 and call it a day because it probably still wouldn't have worked, which would have also led you to believe it was the motherboard. Uh, but if you had swapped between generations, so we went down to a 2600, or even if we'd upgraded to a 5600, I imagine it still would have worked uh, just swapping those two out. So you might've been led to believe that the CPU was to blame. I thought it was at first, and it turns out that the BIOS was the culprit all along. I'm really happy about this one because it means we don't have to swap any hardware out. Uh, it, it just took a bit of software finesse to get this thing back up and running. And uh, whoops, I forgot to reconnect. This is a rear exhaust fan. There we go. With that, thank you so much for watching this far into this one. I definitely learned a thing or two. Hopefully you did as well. Uh, <laughs> I, I got really lucky, I think, just uh, noticing the BIOS revision there. I figured I might as well just check to see how, you know, how recent that BIOS is. Maybe just updating would fix some stability issues. Now, come to find out, that version of the BIOS doesn't even exist on the site anymore uh, for, uh, yeah, for that particular product. And that, I, I kind of thought it was weird <laughs> and I figured it was worth at least looking into and I'm glad I did because at the end of the day it saved us from replacing hardware we didn't really need to. Nothing inherently was wrong with the rig, just had a bit of a BIOS uh, discrepancy. So what do you know? Another day, another odd but satisfying ending to a fix or flop video. If you or someone you know again lives in or around Atlanta, Florida and you have a broken system, something that maybe doesn't power on at all or doesn't send a signal to a monitor, I would love a chance to have a look at it, potentially even fix it for free. You can submit your system via the link in this video's description. Let me know what you thought about this one. Give it a thumbs up if you thought it was interesting. Consider subscribing if you have not already and stay tuned for what we have coming next here on the channel. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.